The Night Beat starts right now. Another lawsuit filed in that deadly drag race crash in Kerrville. Law lawyers now going after more people in this case coming up. And a growing amount of infections in one Texas town tonight, reminding people to watch where they walk. We're going to talk about the parasite that focuses on feet. It's coming up, but first. A hard night for football players at a local high school. Athletes at Tyvee High School are thinking about their fellow teammate who was killed in a tragic crash. Now, someone else who used to play for that same school was also hurt, but it's unclear how the crash happened or if anybody else was involved. The Texas Department of Public Safety not answering our requests for information. But what is clear is the pain a community is dealing with amid this sudden loss. The night team's Patty Santos live in Kerrville where she saw how this community is trying to come together amidst all of this, Patty. Yeah, it was a bitter end to the Tyvee football season. Tonight was senior night, but it was marked with tributes for a beloved player. A moment of silence and prayer to remember 17 year old David Palestrant, a beloved member of the Tyvee High School football team, killed in a crash in Kerrville Thursday night. He was like the light of the locker room. Um, he always had encouraging words and positive words for his teammates, and he just was an all around really good kid. Palestrant played backup center. He wasn't supposed to play tonight's last game, but he was scheduled to walk the field with his parents for seniors night. We've been dealt several tough goals this year. His coach David Jones explains two teammates lost their father during the season and it's brought the team closer together. And it's been extremely tough on these young kids, but they have handled it beautifully. The difficult decision to play tonight's last game wasn't made lightly. To a young man, they they wanted to play. Uh, some of them will never play another game the rest of their life. We have maybe one or two that may get an opportunity to play at the next level. But other than that, high school football is their life, and that's their dream of playing on this field. A dream shared by Palestrant. Tonight, many wore buttons with his photo while his jersey was hung on the team's bench, marking a community's greatest loss. As a parent, you see it as it could be your kid. It could just as easily be you standing there. So that kind of binds all of us together. And tonight we know that many other rival high school teams have reached out to this team and, and are even collecting donations for the family. Those donations are being handled by the high school's athletics office. Steve, Stephania. Hard to really fathom what that community is going through right now. Yeah, thank you, Patty. There are some new names in a new lawsuit filed in that deadly drag race crash in Kerrville. This latest lawsuit centers around the deaths of eight year old Santiago Ramirez and his aunt Rebecca Cedillo. There are several defendants in this lawsuit, including the Jordan Ford car dealership, fly and diesel performance and the driver of the Mustang who lost control before driving right into the crowd. This lawsuit comes days after another attorney filed a lawsuit involving the death of another child six-year-old Daniel Trujillo Jones. It turning out of the pandemic, more children are now able to get the COVID-19 vaccine, but what about children under the age of five? In the U.S., Pfizer is furthest along in testing shots for that younger age group. Look, the trials uh, for kids under five have been underway, and we anticipate that in early 2022 uh, is when we may see uh, a vaccine available for kids in that range. Moderna actually studying its vaccine in children younger than 12 and Johnson and Johnson planning trials in those younger ages, but those trials haven't started yet. Now, people who need help paying rent because of COVID have somewhere else to turn right now. The state of Texas is no longer taking applications for its relief program. However, the city's emergency housing assistance program is. It has enough money through the end of the year, and if you need that help, you should look at the upper left-hand corner of your screen if you see that QR code right there. Well, take a moment scan it with the camera on your phone, and then that's gonna send you to the website where there's more information on that program. Barbara Mitchell is one of thousands of people impacted by the pandemic who also receives funds through that program, and she says that it helps her with rent and utilities. They was real nice about it. You know, I was happy because they, it was no problem. It was like, yes, come down. 
Yeah, it's help. Now, there is a limit to how many people can get help through the program. Depending on your income, you may only be able to use it for six to nine months. We have all those details for you and with that QR code and also on KSAT.com. And new tonight, tensions and flying objects spilling out into a roadway as Mexico's National Guard comes face to face with a group of migrants. The guards apparently tried to detain some of them. That's when a group began throwing rocks at the guardsmen, leading them to retreat. Five of those officers were injured. National Guard officers wary of confronting migrants since a shooting left one migrant dead on Sunday. A pickup truck tried to get around a checkpoint before officers fired, killing one man. Mexico's president later said that shooting was unjustified. Now, this is a different group from a group of asylum seekers we told you about last month, a group of 4,000 people. They're trying to reach Mexico City. They left Tapachula on October 23rd because of a backlog in asylum cases. The Associated Press reports that group only has advanced about 95 miles in two weeks. In other news tonight, a potentially deadly parasite that burrows itself through bare feet is infecting people in a small town near Austin. Turns out the parasite burrows through bare feet before entering the body, and researchers say that the infections in Rancho Vista likely stem from unsanitary surroundings. So this is all according to The Guardian. 16 people have the infection, including a pregnant woman and a two-year-old child in Rancho Vista. While the parasite can turn deadly in certain moments, no deaths have been reported in that small Texas town. Yeah, scary stuff when you hear about this. We have more information about that parasite. Just look for the story on KSAT.com. Now to a recall alert. You know those little chargers that you use to charge up your phones? Well, you might want to take a look at yours. The MyCharge Power Bank now being pulled from the market. 67,000 of them recalled after people suffered burns. The battery can overheat and catch fire. They were sold at Best Buy, Target, Amazon, other places as well. You can contact MyCharge for a voucher. Now, a court battle continues four years after the deadliest mass shooting in Texas. On November 5th of 2017, a former member of the Air Force walked into a church in Sutherland Springs and opened fire. He killed 26 people before eventually turning the gun on himself. That shooting turned the heat on the U.S. Air Force since the military branch didn't enter that shooter's criminal history into a database that would have stopped him from buying guns. Now a trial to determine how much the Air Force should pay the victims' families continues. Today, many are taking a moment to honor America's first black Secretary of State. We know that General Colin Powell also served two tours in Vietnam, became a national security advisor and chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. President Joe Biden, Barack Obama, George W. Bush and Hillary Clinton all attended his funeral service at Washington's Nat National Cathedral. Powell died of COVID-19 complications and he was also battling blood cancer and Parkinson's. Oh, and Powell was a great lion with a big heart. We will miss him terribly. Now, Powell served 30 years in uniform and he survived by his wife, two daughters and son. He planned to get his booster shot when he fell ill to the virus. He was 84 years old. And today started off chilly. We had a morning low of 42 degrees. Then we topped out at 64. So we're starting to gain some ground in the afternoons. You know, all across our area, we were in the 60s today. We will have another cool start to the morning tomorrow, but then some rebounding temperatures to talk about and another cold front. I'll see you in a bit. It's the final Friday night of football before the playoffs are Greg Simmons with your big game coverage coming up. Also a tradition returns. We're talking beer, pretzel, sausage and music all bringing in a celebration together for its 60th anniversary. We're going to take a look at the worst fest next on the Night Beat. Prost. It's official. Worst Fest is back. And Steve's excited. I am excited. A celebration <laughs> of the German heritage bringing people together in New Braunfels tonight. It's back. This is actually its 60th annual event filled with German sausages, drinks, you name it. So organizers worked super hard to get here because, you know, they dealt with a fire, the yeah. pandemic. The night team's John Paul Barajas was there as the celebration began. Check it out. Prost! 
Close. Close. All right then. Come to Worst Fest. Woohoo! Worst Fest. And that they did. Worst Fest kicked off its 60th anniversary, and the crowd couldn't wait to get in to enjoy all the German dishes and to wash it down with some. Ice cold, man, ice cold. German drinks. We're super excited to be here and yeah. get our drink and eat on and just spend time with family. And this is a tradition opening day for the biting of the sausage and the tapping of the keg. Words Fest is back. We can't get over saying it, but they had to overcome some obstacles to get here. In 2019, Market Plots, this big building right here with the archway, completely burned down. And then through the archway, Words Hall took on some significant fire damage. They were able to rebuild Market Plots and remodel Words Hall with a multi million dollar deal. Then they were ready for 2020, but the pandemic put a pause on that. They had to cancel it. Now they're making up for lost time. I think it looks great. They did an awesome job on, you know, building back up after the fire. So we just want to have fun. Along with all the eats and drinks came lots of music and amazing attire, like the Dirndl, a traditional German dress, and of course, the Lederhosen. I think I can pull off the Lederhosen. Probably oh, not. Sure you can. Probably, oh, probably not. not. Probably I'm not, not going to try. <laughs> right. <laughs> If you didn't make it out today, don't worry. Worst Fest will be running through November 14th, so there's plenty of time not to cheers, but to prost. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. So the guy advised John Paul against not trying out the Lederhosen when I was trying to talk him in to trying it out at of 6 o'clock. Well, maybe he wants to say to you, Steve, after you, you do it first. You think so? Yeah. But he was there. He had ample opportunity. Well, you're so excited. Maybe you can go. You know, you, you know who's the king <laughs> of crazy hats is when Adam Kasky went to Worst Fest a few oh, years ago. Oh, we like to have a good time when we go there. <laughs> <laughs> now, Didn't it's you good. buy like two or three hats? Ooh, maybe. I wore one the other night, too, actually, <laughs> at a different <laughs> event. Yep, it's always a good time. I love Worst Fest. Oh, so. so if people go there now this weekend. Oh, sure, yeah, and it'll mean, be comfortable. Okay. Fantastic. You won't be sweating. That's the nice thing, right? Take a look at temperatures outside right now. We're in the 40s and 50s. 54 at the airport in town. Stinson, 53. 52 Divine, but 43 Bernie. 46 in Bull Verde. Bigger picture shows very similar readings, 40s and 50s. But let's talk about tomorrow morning. Temperatures are falling off quickly. We're going to be in the lower 40s for most of our area tomorrow. Even 39 in Gonzales, 41 Canyon Lake, Uvalde, Hondo, 42 Stone Oak, 39 in the morning in Bernie, Elmendorf, 42. So tomorrow's going to be one of our coolest mornings of, of the next several days. And even Sunday will be in the 40s, so you'll notice a chill in the air. But by next week, those morning temperatures come back up to the 60 degree mark. The active weather that we had a few days ago, that's over Florida now. That's where we have that big disturbance over Florida, southeastern U.S., Big Blue H, it's over Baja Peninsula. That's going to nose its way in and keep us sunny, high and dry for the next several days. And we could use some rain. You look at the state, we're falling deeper into drought gradually. 33% of Texas in drought for us. It's basically south of Highway 90 and west of 281, southwest of town. So tomorrow, wall-to-wall -to -wall sunshine. Low 40s in the morning, but by noon, comfortable in 63, and we'll have a high temperature of 70. Good weather for anything outdoors this entire weekend. Grab the, ja the jacket Sunday morning before church in the 40s. Next week, right up near 80 until our next cold front on Veterans Day. All right, we'll get a little break. All right, Adam, thank you. All right, not only are the playoffs on the line tonight, you're talking about district champions, playoff seating. That's right. It's the final Friday of the high school football regular season. Playoffs, district titles on the line, including the big game in our big game covers. District 27-6A between the Rangers and the Knights, all the highlights, and it's rivalry weekend as well, including the Tommy Bowl and the Salsa Bowl when we come back. Hi, we're the Steel Knights cheerleaders, and you're watching big game coverage on KSite 12. Thank you. The Steel Knights looking to close out their undefeated season for the first time since 2015. Going up against Smithson Valley Rangers in the Battle of the District 27-6A title. It's our big game tonight. Steel down 3-0, but fight running, fight back. Running back Payshawn Singleton gets a handoff. Powers his way 10 yards right up the middle. Gets in for the score. 6-3 Steel. Knights take to the air this time. Quarterback Connor Vincent hits Levi Dashnia in the end zone, and he does a nice job of getting one foot down in bounds. Six-yard score, 13-3 Steel at halftime. The Knights start to pull away, though. Singleton with a huge run up the middle 
to watch him stiff arm his way out of a tackle. He's off to the races. No one's going to catch him. 78 yards to score. Makes it 23 steals. Nice finish. Undefeated 20 to 6. It feels great. You know, we've been working for a long time at this. You know, came into the season. My goal, everybody else's goal, come out here, win every single game, win all of our district games, go 7 0 in district, everything else like that. It fell, it fell right in place. All right, hard to believe that Justin Rockets are out of the playoffs after a rough season this year, but the Wagner Thunderbirds fighting to stay alive in this neighborhood rivalry. Thunderbirds strike first. Running back Markel Ford takes a pitch on the option. Look at him. He's got all this room he has in front of him. Picks up 25 yards before he's touched, and he's even in for the 30-yard score, 7-0 Wagner, but they're not finished. The T-Birds stay on the ground. This time they're handing off to Quinton Owens. Look at him burst up the middle, breakthrough. The arm tackles on his way to the score. A 40-yard touchdown, 14 to nothing. Wagner, they would need help from Clemens, but the final is 42, 40, should say 43, 42. Justin comes back to win it. Reagan fans out in force tonight as they take on Brandeis at Hero Stadium. Rattlers already have a playoff spot. The Broncos trying to get in. Reagan down 7 nothing in the second. We're deep in Bronco territory. Quarterback Lance Lorenz takes a snap, but decides to run it in. He picks a good blocking. Pay dirt right there. Nine-yard touchdown. Ties the game at 7. The final from Heroes, 34-7. Reagan, the Madison Mavericks, MacArthur Brain was thanking service men and women before the game. The Mavs fighting for a playoff spot. Madison turning their defense into offense early here. Linebacker Isaiah Edwards makes a nice grab for the interception. He's going the other way. 55 yards on the pick six. Seven nothing. Madison as he goes. We head to the scoreboard to find out if that gets gone final. Madison with a shutout. 49 to nothing. Reagan over Brandeis. 34 to seven. Elsewhere Smithson Valley falls to steal. 20 to six. And look at Judson coming back to defeat Wagner tonight. 43-42. The fathers of the Taft cheerleaders give us the best shot here as they try to energize the crowd tapped up 20 to nothing, but the Mustangs are on the move. Quarterback Jackson Gutierrez rolls out of the pocket, decides to tuck it and run. He picks up 16 yards all the way down to the tap 18 yard line. It's fourth and one from the goal line now. Jay trying to punch it in, but Gutierrez gets stopped at the line. The Raiders defense holds. So we check that final score tapped with the win 34 to 8. Warren Warriors are out, and the Harlan Hawks are in the playoffs with Warriors with the ball first, not for long. Xavier Walton comes up with a nice interception, putting the Hawks offense near midfield. The Hawks capitalize on the turnover, running back Jay. Gonzalez punches it in from a yard out that made it 7-0 Harlan. The final from Ferris, it is 42-20 Harlan. The Thomas Jefferson Mighty Mustangs ready for the 60th annual Tommy Bowl against Thomas Edison Golden Bears. There's a bear attack in the first quarter. Alex Hernandez hits Francisco Medina on the swing pass. Looking to slice through the Jefferson defense. He gets to the outside. It's a foot race down the sideline. Looks like he's going all the way, but Joshua Blancas takes a great angle, pushes him out of the seven. Bears get tricky here. Receiver Samad Bunch in motion takes a handoff and pitches it back to the receiver Isaiah Tovar, who then fires it back across the field to Hernandez, the quarterback for the 10-yard score. 7-0 Edison, the final from the Tommy Bowl, 42-0 Edison over Edgewood Stadium. Memorial starting the second half against Kennedy in the Salsa Bowl. Minute then looking to rally in the fourth quarter. Quarterback Sam Hernandez with the rainbow pass to Matthew Rubio, who hauls it in for the 33-yard score. Memorial still trails 0-28-17. Let's see if Kennedy makes the playoffs and go back to the big game covered scoreboard to find out. And they do, 28-17. Edison over Jefferson, the shutout, 42-0. John Jay falls to tap, 34-8. And Harlan over Warren, 42-20. A somber night in Kerrville as the Antlers walked out with a jersey of fallen teammate David Palestran, killed in a car accident last night with the team voting to play for him tonight. Alamo Heights Mules get on the scoreboard first. James Sobey to Rhett Anderson. They connect again this season. This one a 58-yard score, and it's an early 7-0 lead. See if the Mules go undefeated, and they do 24-7. East Central fans having a lot to cheer about as they watch the Hornets steam Clemens to tune a 14-0 lead, and the Hornets weren't done. Quarterback Kaden Bosenko keeps it on the option read, picks up 10 yards before getting knocked out of the bounds inside the 15. A few plays later, running back Kenyon McClure caps off the drive with a one-yard touchdown. It made it 21-0 at the time. East Central is in the playoffs with the win, and they get it 28 to nothing. Coin toss between Southside and Southwest Legacy before the game. Legacy wins that battle, but can they win the war? Legacy puts their offense out first. Quarterback Zazar Tovar takes a snap, steps up in the pocket, is going deep to Javier Murillo, and he makes a great grab over the defender. It looks like he falls into the end zone, but the ref says he's out of the one. Next play, Tovar keeps it, powers his way in. 7 nothing Titan. Legacy trying to go undefeated in district, and do they? Let's find out. Let's go back to the big game coverage scoreboard. 41-6, to six, Legacy over Southside, they do. East Central over Clemens, 28 to nothing. Kerrville, Tyvee Falls, Alamo Heights, 24 to seven. And Bernie Champion way outscores Lockhart, 64 14. And Tony fans going wild. They should have won a game against number two ranked Central Catholic. Buttons down 30 21, under 40 seconds to play in the half. But on the Apache's four yard line, quarterback Silas Gomez is going to keep on the option read. Sprints to the far corner of the end zone, getting at the pylon to cut the Antonio lead down to two. The Apaches still have about 20 seconds left and near, near field. So they decided to throw deep. Michael Mayhew 
Michael makes a great leaping intercept to keep Antonio out of the end zone before the half. Let's see if that has gone final. And I don't believe it has, has it? It is 44-35. It has just gone final. There we go. Meantime, at Holy Cross, we are credited and created with the Knights cheerleaders as they hosted Sacred Heart out of Hallisville. Holy Cross up 14-13 with under 30 seconds to play. First half on the Sacred Heart 10-yard line. Quarterback Gilbert Alvarado throws a high-arching pass to the back quarter of the end zone for Rudy Rodriguez, 21-13. Holy Cross at the half. The final there, Holy Cross gets the win, 30-16. Looking for something good to eat at Cougar Stadium. Cole hosting Marion at Fort Sam. Bulldogs up 21 to nothing in the third quarter, adding to that lead. Quarterback Tanner Beakley keeps it himself. Nice in for the eight-yard touchdown, 28 to nothing. Marion, the winner is in the playoffs, and that is Marion, 27-12. Over Bulldog Stadium, Somerset taking on your Valley. Home team is rolling. Tosso goes here to the running back, Julian Avila, Avila, I should say, who gets some great blocks downfield, races into the end zone for the 20-yard touchdown. Somerset puts 50 points on the board tonight. Back to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final. Look at that, 56-19 Somerset. Marion in the playoffs, 27-12 over Cole. Elsewhere, Antonian with a big win against Central Catholic. That is an upset, 44-35. Holy Cross over Sacred Heart, 30-16. We have much more to come, including our big game coverage road trip, fan cam, more highlights, and more scores in the final week of the regular season. But first, let's listen to the Steel Knights Marching Band. Our big game coverage road trip has Larry and photographer Eddie Latigo making the 116 mile two hour drive to Carissa Springs. See if the Wildcats can finish their season undefeated against Honda. Let's take you Larry live right now where it looks like the game's still going on, Larry. It is, Greg. We have uh, three minutes and 25 seconds to go, and I'll tell you what, this contest certainly feels like a playoff one, and rightfully so, because both teams had a lot at stake, plus it was homecoming for the Wildcats. Talk about getting revved up before the game. Carrizo Springs ready to rumble with the Hondo Owls tonight for a district championship. First quarter, 7-0 Wildcats. Evan Castellanos throws the ball to C.J. Zuvia for a 53-yard touchdown, and it's 14-0 Carrizo Springs. Same score, Wildcats ball. There's a fumble on the snap. Hondo's Wyatt boss, yeah, he is the boss. He scoops and scores a 35-yard touchdown, and Hondo is on the board 14-7. Later in the first quarter, Hondo still playing from behind. The handoff goes to Carson Winchester for a powerful eight-yard run, and Hondo draws closer 21-14. He's a tough dude to tackle. Second quarter now, closing seconds. Cats balling up 35-24. Evan Castellanos rolls out and goes deep to number 14. Avi Ramirez for a huge 50-yard gain into the red zone. Moments later, Castellanos hits Ramirez on the slant. 12-yard touchdown with five seconds left in the first half, and the Wildcats led 41-24 at halftime in this district. 15 4 a contest and right now Carrizo Springs leads 69 to 30 with three minutes and 12 seconds left in this contest. The Wildcats are looking for their first district championship since 1997. They're three minutes away while ending an eight game slide against Hondo. Greg. All right. Thanks a lot, Larry. Time now for fan cam where your fans help us cover one of the big games in our big game coverage tonight. Here's our Andrew Seeley. Senior night at Randolph High School, Rohawks taking on Poteet and the state's leading rusher, Ernest Davila, strikes on the first play from scrimmage right up the middle, and he is gone. That's a 75-yard touchdown run, and it's 6-0 Aggies. But Randolph responds. First and goal at the nine. Michael Brown takes the handoff on the stretch left, cuts back against the grain for the nine-yard score, and it's 9-6 Rohawks. Then next possession for the home team. Quarterback Aaron Davis keeps it himself, goes to the far sideline, breaks a tackle, and he gets to the pylon for the five-yard score. 16 to 6 Randolph. Fan cam departs at the end of the first quarter. Randolph leading Poteet 16 to 6 from Mickler Memorial Field. Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you a lot, Andrew. Let's take a look at your score. Poteet with a big win, 40-23. Navarro with a huge win over YMLA, 75-7. Spurs get a big win on the road against Orlando again, 102-89. Busy night. Very. Thank you, Greg. Got All right, we'll be right back after this. That's it for the night beat. Don't forget, good morning, San Antonio starts at 6 a.m. Have a great weekend.